Thank you for joining us on our seven-minute discussion around our outlook for 2017. At a glance, we expect the economy to continue to grow, albeit slowly. We want to use caution around investing internationally. Our expectation for our domestic stock market is consistent with 2016 in the mid-single-digit return years. And for our bond markets, on the lower side with the expectation of rising interest rates on the lower side of those single digit returns. Although there's certainly some themes that we may want to continue to add to um, in terms of uh, policy drivers as an example, uh, Trump trades, things that are going to do well based on the expectation of what the new administration uh, is going to do. We probably want to stay focused geographically in the United States and stay away from things like developed international. And then there's going to be some opportunities that may come up, things like small caps, um, technology, healthcare, emerging markets are, are things that uh, may provide to be potential opportunities along the way. Let's dive a little deeper into why the expectation on the economy as a whole. Uh, again, first off, 2.5% GDP growth expectation for the coming year, possibly two to three uh, Federal Reserve rate hikes, and an acceleration in inflation. A lot of this really coming from a lift in consumer spending, or, or at least steady consumer spending, improved business investment, and fiscal policies that have a growth agenda. Really what that would do is it would put less of the burden of the GDP makeup on the consumer and hopefully or possibly uh, provide more incentive for business investment uh, and having the federal government be less of a drag on GDP. Although we have to keep in mind that sometimes these policies take time to take effect, especially uh, if you look at major policy changes uh, in previous administrations, on average it's taken about six months. Uh, to get some of those policy changes made as a whole. Diving in a little deeper on the international front, although fundamentals and valuations uh, are attractive, especially in emerging markets, one of the risk factors that we have to take into consideration is the strong U.S. dollar. Especially since the election, we've seen a uptick in the U.S. dollar against all, almost every major currency in the world. And that could lead to a potential breakout that would mute returns investing internationally. Here at home, our stock market, again, the expectation is for mid-single digit returns. The reason for that is really a pickup in earnings growth, stable valuations, and the concept of uh, a typical mid-cycle market. What I mean by that is if you look at stock markets in the middle of an economic cycle in which years we do not enter a recession, on average, the S&P 500 produces a, an average gain of 12% and is positive 84% of the time. That's also consistent with the first year of the presidential cycle. On average, the S&P gains 9.3%. And it's also higher 92% of the time in the first year of a presidential return. Well, one of the main drivers to expect stock valuations to increase is really the end of, of the earnings recession that we've called it. We had four consecutive quarters where corporate earnings had declined on a year-over-year -year basis. That ended in the third quarter of 2016. And you can see here by the charts that are the consensus estimates are that these earnings for calendar year 2017 are going to post large year-over-year -year increases, which would be a major driver for stock prices. We've also talked a bit about stocks being expensive, the price-to-earnings ratio being above average, which is absolutely correct. However, there's a smaller relationship between those stock valuations and short-term performance. This chart shows one-year performance of the S&P 500 based on uh, the price-to-earnings ratio. And you can see there have been losses when we've had undervalued stocks, and there have been losses when we've had overvalued stocks. And 
there have been gains when we've had undervalued stocks, and there's been gains when we've had uh, overvalued stocks. So the valuation by itself shouldn't be a reason to sell stocks. Same thing with interest rates. Uh, concept of interest rates go up, stock market goes down. Uh, while that may be true when interest rates are higher, above 5%, when the 10-year treasury is below 5%, there's actually a positive correlation historically. So when interest rates go up, stock prices uh, increase. Uh, how to invest? A balance model, diversification, uh, potentially adding some more small caps, uh, looking at some cyclical ideas and sectors, and watching really for some emerging market opportunities. Bonds, short and sweet, low expectations for returns. Uh, there's still a reason to own bonds when our markets have declined in value. They've been a steady asset class. That's certainly an argument to add bonds. But certainly the consideration of rising interest rate environment, when interest rates do rise, bonds typically do not do well. A half a percent increase in the 10-year treasury, uh, broad bond market would yield less than a quarter of a percent as a whole. So how do we invest in bonds if we, if we are holding bonds intermediate to short-term uh, in terms of their uh, duration and maturities and moderate credit sensitivity as well. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, as always, please contact us with any questions and uh, look forward to seeing everyone in the new year. Thanks and have a great day.